All right. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, and thank you for joining us for uh, Dominican University of California's Master of Science in Biological Sciences information session. My name is Elise Rudolph. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Dominican, and I do work specifically with our MS Bio program. Uh, we're joined also by Dr. Meredith Protis, who is the program director, uh, and she is a wealth of knowledge on uh, our MS Bio program. Um, Meredith, would you like to introduce yourself or share anything before we get started? Sure. Um, so again, my name is Meredith Protas, and I'm the director for the MS Bio program. So welcome, everyone. I'm looking forward to sharing some information with you. Great. Uh, so we have a short presentation for you today. We'll cover uh, information about the research that you would conduct in this program. We'll talk about the course schedule, tuition, the admissions process, etc. So thanks again for joining us. To get us started, I'd like to first talk about the three partnerships that we have here at Dominican uh, in our MS Bio program. So uh, you'll hear us talk more about this, but our MS Bio program is a research intensive program. And the way that we incorporate so much hands-on research training into the, the master's program is that we partner with three institutions. So uh, one of those institutions is uh, the researchers that we have here at Dominican, so other faculty who have exciting research projects they are working on. And then we also partner with uh, Biomarin Pharmaceuticals, which is a large pharmaceutical company here in Marin County, and also the Buck Institute on Aging. So these are excellent uh, industry uh, uh, biomedical research companies uh, that, that our students do get to work with while they're in the program. So I mentioned this before, but it is a research intensive program. Uh, what that means is in this two year program, students will work around 40 hours a week actually in a lab on real research projects at either the Buck Institute on Aging or Biomarin Pharmaceuticals. So really the bulk of your time for those two years is going to be working on real research projects in a lab, gaining valuable lab skills. Um, and we'll talk more about this, but also you know, potentially conducting research that would result in publication or presentations, et cetera. Uh, this program is also a thesis-based program. And most excitingly, uh, if you do have a research placement at Biomarin uh, Pharmaceuticals or the Buck Institute on Aging, tuition would be fully covered by those institutions. Um, so because you're, you're working on these research projects there, they would pay your tuition in full, which is very exciting. So uh, you may be wondering what types of research opportunities you would have or what sort of projects our uh, current students and alumni have worked on. So those research topics would include things such as Alzheimer's disease, Huntington's disease, cancer biology, malaria, drug development, rare metabolic disorders, and cave, animal uh, cave animals model for eye disease. And this is actually, uh, Dr. Protis, your area of research specialty, correct? Awesome. Is there anything else you would like to share? Any other types of, of research or um, uh, areas of specialty that, that our students have, have worked on? Well, um, more so that the students really have the opportunity to learn a lot of cutting edge techniques and really participate in a research project and become very immersed in it. And I think this is really what's unusual and kind of like the key feature that makes our program stand out. Absolutely. Um, and is there anything you'd like to share with us about your specific research that you work on? Sure. Um, so uh, we work on something kind of unusual, which is um, cave dwelling animals. And the species we work on doesn't have eyes and doesn't have pigment. And well, actually there's a surface form that does have eyes and pigment and the cave form does have eyes, uh, doesn't have eyes and doesn't have pigment. So we really try to understand the genetics behind that. And um, I've now, well, I have one master's student currently and I had one master's student in the past. So it's a really great way to have students again, like participate in research and really become immersed in the process. Absolutely. 
So uh, just going off of that, that immersive piece that Dr. Protus mentioned, um, again, it's a two-year program, 36 units, and uh, we already talked about the fact that, that you will be spending 40 hours a week immersed in a lab conducting research. It's very hands-on. If you are a hands-on learner or you're a learn-by-doing type person, this is an excellent program for you. Um, but there is obviously a course component as well. So students will take one course, which they'll attend uh, once per week in the evenings at Dominican. Um, and you can see on the PowerPoint slide here, uh, just some examples of what those courses would be, um, and also some of the, uh, the, the advanced topics that, that the courses would cover. Dr. Protus, would you like to talk any more about the class schedule or what courses would look like? Sure. So um, generally, the format of each semester is that there's a journal club one time a week, which is around lunchtime. And then there's also one core class, which is held at the evening time. So around like 5 to 7.40 PM or so, one night a week. But the rest of the time is basically the students are performing research. So the format of the courses is really to allow for that. Excellent. Wonderful. So this slide just contains some information showing that uh, the majority of our students have found the program to be incredibly beneficial uh, and moving them toward their next steps. So 42% of, uh, of our students have presented at national or regional conferences. 46% have submitted papers to peer reviewed journals and uh, that were published or uh, accepted to be published. So very exciting. Uh, and then the majority of our students said that the MS Bio program uh, was effective or very effective in advancing them in their current career. And we'll talk more about this in a moment, but um, whether uh, research is your end goal or if you see this as a stepping stone, regardless, this could be an incredible platform for you. Uh, and this is a, a slide that is an example of one of our current students who was able to present at a conference, present her research at a conference. And uh, this is an example of one of our students who was first author on a publication. So really exciting work that our students are doing. Uh, and we talked about career outcomes and how the MS Bio program can either be kind of the end destination for you or just the beginning of your academic journey. Um, we have folks who, who graduate and continue to work for, for companies in industry, so who continue working at BioMarin, Chevron, UltraGenX, Genentech. Um, we also have folks who've gone on after completing this program to be uh, research assistants or lab managers at UCSF or at the Buck. And we also have folks who have used this program as a platform to other academic programs. So we have folks, alumni who've gone on to PhD programs at Northwestern, University of Colorado, USC. I believe uh, Dr. Protus most recently we had an alumni who's pursuing a PhD program at Harvard. Um, we have students who've gone on to pharmacy school at UCSF or Toro, law school and medical school. Dr. Pertis, is there anything you'd like to add about other places our students have gone? Um, not about like other places so much, but just that um, our students tend to have a fairly easy time finding whatever opportunity afterwards. So I'm thinking of our graduating class right now. A lot of them have actually already found jobs or have already kind of set up their next step, whether it's for their schooling or elsewhere. So I think, as Elise had mentioned, it's a really good platform for that next step. Um, a lot of our students are finding jobs directly afterwards, but also for those who are hoping to further their education, depending on what that is, that's also a good um, kind of transition to that as well. Absolutely. So we're, really, wherever you see yourself going, um, the MS Bio program can take you there. And here's uh, some pictures of some of those awesome alumni and what they're doing now. So this is a current student who's gone to pharmacy school at Toro in the upper left. Uh, the bottom left is an alumni who's completing a, a PhD program at USC. 
Um, and we have students, you know, currently at UC Davis, UC Irvine, et cetera. So um, Dr. Protus, is there, you know, any stories you'd like to share? Any other success stories? I know we have a current student going on to Harvard. Anything that else you'd like to share? Um, yeah, well, so like this year, like you mentioned, we have one of our students who's graduating right now who was accepted to a program at Harvard. So she's going to start this fall. We also have um, another alumni who uh, just, uh, well, no, he, he worked for a year as a lab manager in the um, lab where he did his master's degree. And then this year he was accepted to the University of Illinois. So he'll be going on to a PhD program there. So, you know, a lot of, I think, successes through their program. And it's really nice to hear a lot of our students actually come back we have like an alumni panel and they tell us what they're up to and they kind of help the students um, who are still in the program to think about like what possible next steps that they could take. Excellent. Uh, so at this point, uh, we'll discuss sort of the application process to the program. Uh, the baseline requirements that we're looking for are for you to have either a uh, BS in biology or chemistry. If you do not have a BS in biology or chemistry, it doesn't necessarily mean that the door is completely closed. What we would look for in that case is to make sure that you have all of the prerequisite courses completed, which I'll touch on in a moment. Um, so aside from uh, having completed your bachelor's degree, uh, we would ask for two letters of recommendation. Those do need to be from a professional or academic source, so a boss, a professor, someone like that. Uh, we'd like to see your updated resume. Um, particularly, please include any sort of previous lab experience or research experience you may have. Uh, we would like to see a personal statement, and the prompt for that is on our website. And then in terms of prerequisites, we would like to see that you've completed two semesters of calculus, physics, and uh, organic chemistry, so two semesters of each, uh, and one semester of biochemistry, one semester of statistics. We'd also like to see that you have a 3.0 GPA from your last 60 units. Um, your last 60 units would typically consist of your most recent two years of coursework, whether that be your uh, most recent two years um, of, or of undergrad, your last two years of undergrad, or if you've taken some community college courses or any other um, post back courses, uh, it would start from your most recent classes taken. Um, and I'm sure many of you will be excited to hear that the GRE is now optional. So you do not have to sit for the GRE in order to be eligible for the program. If you have taken the GRE, we would love to see your scores. So please do go ahead and submit those. Uh, Dr. Pertis, is there anything you would like to add in regard to kind of what we're looking for in a candidate? So I, I think this program is most well suited for people who really enjoy research. So I would say really kind of um, talk about your research experience in your personal statement. And uh, that's something that's really important for us to know about and also for people who might be interested in uh, interviewing you for them to know what you previously done. Absolutely. Um, so in regard to how to apply, and Dr. Protus did just touch on this, um, but once you've completed your online application and submitted all the documents we just mentioned, um, there is an interview process for this program as well. So uh, your completed application will first be reviewed by Dr. Protus, and then uh, the application will be sent to researchers at the Buck Institute or at Biomarin Pharmaceuticals. And researchers there will review your applications and invite you to interview with them. Once you've interviewed uh, with researchers at either or both of those institutions, um, if an offer is made, uh, then we would consider that a research match and you would be accepted into the program. So the key piece being that uh, when you interview, 
uh, there would need to be a, a good research placement for you at either the Buck or BioMarin, uh, which is also hugely beneficial because as long as there's that research match, you'll have that tuition coverage as well. Uh, Dr. Perez, would you like to add anything about um, the, the interview process? Um, sure. So I think the key thing for the interview process is, uh, you know, oftentimes the interviewers will want to hear about what your previous research experience is. So I would definitely, you know, especially if you've graduated a few years ago, definitely go back to your, you know, research work that you've done, review what you have done, and get familiar with talking about it. Also, another thing that's important is to um, look to see who you're being interviewed by. Look at some papers um, from that lab, make sure you have an idea of what the lab is looking at. I mean, this, this will be helpful to you to see if this is something that's inter of interest to you and so that you can ask questions um, for the person to inform yourself about what they really do. Yeah, that's great advice. Um, so regarding tuition for the program, uh, the tuition is $1,110 per unit. Uh, but as we've mentioned previously, as long as there's a research match for you at uh, the Buck or BioMarin, and you would be conducting your research at one of those institutions, they would cover the full cost of your tuition. So um, that's a really definitely exciting part of this program. Um, there are also scholarships available and also um, uh, financial aid is available to qualified students through FAFSA. So something else that you could check out if there were other living expenses that you wanted covered outside of your tuition. All right, so our last slide is uh, my contact information. Again, again, my name is Elise Rudolph, uh, and this is the contact information of Dr. Meredith Protis, uh, who is the program director. So uh, we are both excited that you're interested in this program and would love to talk to you more. Don't hesitate to give me a call or an email, and Dr. Protis is also very available to answer any questions about the program. Are there any final thoughts you would like to add? Um, just, you know, if you're interested in the program, as Elise said, we're happy to talk more about it because there's only so much information we can cover during this time frame. So any questions that you have, really feel free to reach out to us. Absolutely. Um, the last uh, piece of information I will add is you may have noticed a, a, a expired deadline to apply. Um, so I want to encourage you that, that we are accepting applications to this program. Um, currently on our website, uh, we have June 1st, 2021 as our priority deadline. Um, so, you know, that is right around the corner, but we will continue to accept applications um, until July. So definitely, if you think that you would like to consider applying for this program, we are still accepting applications until July of 2021. Uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us and we can support you throughout the application process. Um, it's been a real pleasure. We hope that you we've answered your questions. And again, we'll look forward to being in touch.